Hello, my name's Derek. I live in Alaska. I love music. And I'm just so damn happy. Okay, my name's actually Norman, and I'm the Gaming Historian. If you haven't checked out my show, it's on RetroWare TV as well. You should check it out. If you want to see Derek, go watch my show. So as a special gift to you on April Fool's Day, I'm filling in for Derek. Have you ever played a game and wondered why it wasn't more popular? Yeah? Well, I get that feeling every time I play Rystar. You know, I just realized something. I don't think I've ever done a video game review before. I mean, I can tell you all about the history of Rystar, but, but review it? Hmm. I wonder. Maybe I'll see what this guy has. The angry video game nerd. Nerd likes Rolling Rock. Happy Video Game Nerd loves wine. I love Michelob Ultra. Rystar started as a character idea for Sonic, as a rabbit that grabbed things with his ears. In fact, it was pretty damn close to being the new Sega mascot, but they were having issues developing a game idea based on speed with a guy that grabs stuff, so the character was scrapped. I think it's a real shame too because, in my opinion, this game is slightly better than Sonic the Hedgehog. I'll explain later. Now before I begin, I think I should point out that the prototype name for this game was Feel. Yeah, I'm glad they stuck with Rystar. Rystar begins as Kaiser Greedy, a space pirate, uses his mind control to take over planets. It is up to Rystar to stop the pirate and save his father, the legendary hero! Okay. So the story is not important at all. But what is important is how much fun the game is and how the controls are. And you know what? Rystar nails both of these. First, the controls. They're pretty simple. Rystar only has one move, and that is to grab. How do you kill enemies? Just grab them. Rystar will headbutt them and bounce right off of them. No special moves, no combinations, just grab. I actually looked in the manual wondering if there were any secret moves I was missing, but nope. The simplicity is wonderful. Oh, and you can jump too. Even the platforming is done by grabbing, and let me say this, the platforming is really, really well done. What is so wonderful about the platforming is how rewarding it is. There are several paths to explore in each level, and the hardest ones to reach offer the greatest prizes. And you know what? I WANT to explore each level because of the level interaction. There are a variety of obstacles you can grab onto that allows you to reach certain places in each level. It's actually very rewarding. Yep, climbing, swinging, floating, it's all there. Unlike Sonic the Hedgehog, where they always talk about how fast you can go, but when you go too fast, you run into stuff. The game just comes to a screeching halt. And since he's so damn fast, the platforming's all slippery. <sighs> okay. I'm done talking about Sonic. While I'm talking about gameplay, I should mention the boss fights. 
They start off very easy, but soon become challenging and slightly puzzle-ish too. Usually before each boss fight, a small clue is given to show you how you can defeat them. There's still a lot of trial and error for the boss fights, but not enough to leave you frustrated or run out of continues. And speaking of the fights, they're just really cool. One boss has you throwing food in his mouth, another is a bird you have to stop from singing. The designers did a great job making each boss fight unique, considering the simplicity of the game. Now when it comes to graphics, I think Rystar really stands out on the Genesis, and I'm sure you can see why. It's just so colorful and detailed. If you just look at some of the levels, it's really something to see. It almost looks like a Super Nintendo game, which had the better graphical capabilities. The attention to detail really stands out. Nothing is blocky in this game. Everything is colorful and wonderfully detailed. It's almost like playing a cartoon. Rystar has some funny animations too, very similar to Sonic actually, such as when you don't move him for a while. The music by Tomoko Sazahi is great. It's some of her early work and probably not her best, but it is enjoyable to listen to and each level has fitting theme music. The most impressive probably being the musical planet. I, I guess that would make sense. Sazaki would go on to compose more music for Sega, including the Knights games and Sonic Adventure 2. Now I'll be honest, Rystar does have some negatives. For one, the game is pretty damn challenging, especially at the later levels. Because of Rystar's lack of moves, it can almost seem unfair in certain situations when trying to avoid or kill enemies. The Xbox 360 port does have a save feature, which is really, really nice. The original Genesis version, however, does not. At least you get a lot of continues. You wanna know the worst thing about this game? It came out in 1995. Now, the 16-bit systems were pretty much on their way out, and PlayStation and Nintendo 64 were coming in, so the game didn't sell very well, but it was a critical success, making this game a hidden gem. There is also a Game Gear version of the game, if you can believe that. It's pretty similar to the Genesis version, which makes it pretty impressive for a handheld game. The graphics are some of the best on the Game Gear as well. And if you don't have a Game Gear or a Genesis, Rystar is readily available. It's on the Sega Genesis collection that was released for the PlayStation 2 and PlayStation Portable, the Wii Virtual Console, and on Sonic's Ultimate Genesis collection for PS3 and 360. If you're going to choose one, I'd get the Xbox 360 version. It's brought to life in HD, and there's a save feature. Definitely nice. So in conclusion, Rystar, it's a pretty damn good game. While it's not the most popular game from Sega, I definitely think it's one of their best. If you want to check out my show and other great shows, head on over to RetroWareTV.com. This is Norman saying good night and good luck.